Hello and welcome to the Star Citizen News for the week ending the 7th of May. We take all of the information that Star Citizen pumps out from its newsletters and weekly shows and then compress it into an easily manageable, carryable block. The schedule report update for Alpha 3.0, so the target window for a live release has now been widened from the 29th of June to the 13th of July for actual live release. And that is a target, so we'll have to see what actually happens with that. Network bind and unbind feature has been moved out of the 3.0 tree uh, to make way for a persistent data refactor, which due to the expanding capabilities of persistent data to support gameplay features in 3.0 has required the network team to work on a refactor to get everything functional. Though the other network improvements should still go there a long way as well, uh, and they will be working on that network bind and unbind, I believe, for 3.1. On a better note, they do have um, and have completed notably um, atmospheric entry graphics and coding, the power supply pipe system, as well as some more features. Um, and, well, let's talk about these new features that they've put into the 3.0 schedule. Uh, vehicle customizer, allowing players to customize their ship via a ship customization screen so that um, edits can be done without locating the exact port on your ship. A ship selector, replacing the ship selection terminals within the persistent universe, allowing players more freedom in spawning ships at designated locations. Heavy armor for Star Marine, so heavy armor will be enabled for um, selection within Star Marine's loadout screen in the menu and should have function as well. Um, insurance, they're going to have the first implementation of insurance when a player's ship is destroyed. They're going to have to request a replacement version from their insurance provider. Remember that any ships lost in the um, alpha of the game are inconsequential and it's all for testing anyway so you're not going to permanently lose your ship do not worry and according to that schedule at the moment it looks very likely that we're going to have the levski landing zone in 3.0 as well but remember blockers can and will happen so we will continue to track that every week a couple of little sneaky peekies as well in the newsletter we saw the concept art for the interior of an outpost outposts will provide players with vital services based on locations needs this outpost here features an engineering room this gives me a little insight into what we might get into 3.0 or 3.1 in regards to the internals of these outposts i wasn't actually a fun expecting any form of functionality like this this early but it's a possibility that we might have functional buildings on moons and planets sooner rather than later now and uh, the xian concept was also updated so in atv we saw the updated xian race look um they are very turtly very cave troll from lord of the rings looking but in the lawmaker's guide to the galaxy as well they talk about the ryla system um, and this actually gives some more insight into the xian um, history and law i'll put up links to that and we'll also cover more about these alien races in a future video too we'll do a ground up of all of them together and then we'll look at more of them individually and all we know sort of stuff as well through may all rsi subscribers can fly the drake buccaneer dogfighter it's basically on your account for the entirety of may atv so let's talk about atv TV, which was Austin focused this week. Design have been working on the major features for Alpha 3.0 with progress on cargo and commodity trading. This also entails getting the shopping experience, ship persistence and shopping kiosks ready. Um, they've been getting assets planned and created for the first shops in game too. Work on missions and mission givers such as Miles Eckhart with a reputation system, conversation trees and reactions of them for 3.0. Uh, designating areas in Levski for stealth entry, smuggling, quest giver locations, where things should go, and the flow of the zone. Art and Animation have been finishing up on the damage modelling for the Cutlass Black, and then they're going to be moving on to its um, levels of detail to kind of finish that ship up. They've also been updating usable animations um, for their new usable system, um, with lots of further optimizations for that as well. They've um, mo-capped um, picking up crates at, at different heights, and then kind of using doors as well but i really like the the way that they have the crates sliding on and off of the shelves um they've worked on zero g enter and exit animations for the dragonfly and they've been working on the player interaction cockpit experience too engineering there have been working on some of their back-end services bringing them all over to the diffusion architecture they are moving um the more complex services over next like the persistent database and persistent cache diffusion is the refactor of their entire back-end infrastructure um to the new cloud orientated architecture that 
that has better scalability and is much more sensible for them. Uh, the game server and client are very close to this diffusionized system as well, um, and this is going to close the communication gap between the back-end and front-end systems, hopefully making Star Citizen much more manageable for them. And they also um, have more control over bandwidth management using a technique they call router biasing. Um, some other stuff, uh, QA have been testing 3.0 and Squadron 42, which is great. I'm sure they've got some great stories they'll share with us soon. Uh, and the Eva Carti and the PTU wave tester list um, from their point of view has been updated for 3.0. So um, when 3.0 does go to the Eva Carti and the PTU waves, make sure you check your emails because you may be invited if you've par been participating on the issue council. Um, Turbulent also talked about Spectrum. Um, so Spectrum point, uh, 0 0.3.3 three has been released and um, with nested threads so you can choose between chronological or linear threads uh, or nested threads which is the reddit style threads then when you create a thread and um, they're now working on 0 0.3.4 finding tags and bookmarks uh, for that one and adding more filters and um, so it's just gonna every time they release every couple of weeks we're gonna get a better and better experience they are also for future releases uh, looking at working on um, pm groups um, so you can have uh, much more of a um, better system uh, for uh, specific lobbies and getting parties in uh, together, uh, as well as the spectrum overlay for the game. There was a little featurette in ATV2 about the networking guys and about their deployment of AWS servers and all that sort of jazz. It's worth a watch if you're interested in that sort of stuff. We also saw, um, I believe it's like a picture-in-picture -picture wingman kind of thing of Mark Hamill um, talking to your character when he's flying with you um, at, at this early stage. So check that out as well. Come on, Lieutenant. First we clear our assigned patrol, then we'll rendezvous with Trejo. And Lieutenant, make sure Trejo understands this is your op. She goes off again like what happened at the Sting, I'm pulling you. I'm not gonna be your dad if that's what you're asking. Kid is just a nickname. There was a happy hour interview with Brian Chambers discussing what the German studio does, as like an overview, what his job entails. It's worth watching if we're interested in listening to how the studios operate, how Brian sees the project, and Brian's background. He's retold the story of how they cracked the procedural text so quickly. Um, he did mention a few things, actually, and we'll go through these. Um, he said, I see the backers as my publisher, which is an awesome attitude from my point of view as a backer. Um, solar eclipses are not planned um, as like a feature but they might happen naturally in the game because of the tech they've got as planets rotate and orbit so they, that we might see stuff like that happen. Uh, there are cool random things and possibly easter eggs to discover on these moons um, even as early as 3.0 though really cool stuff and easter eggs and stuff will get added as the content matures um, for the game. They are planning for roughly 325 planets and moons in the future, and they have the ability to create caves if they want. There will be extreme weather conditions. One of the goals with procedural tech is to allow them to lay out cities and city planets quickly. Levski was built from various modular pieces, then another 20% um, like bespoke custom artist really sculpted items to give it that unique character. They have uh, giant mountains, well they have the ability in any way to place giant mountains on planets if they want. They are specking out decorations for cockpits for ships as well um, and Happy Hour will now be fortnightly. Um, they are working on something for the new player experience, much needed if you ask me. And that's kind of it for the news this week. Every month we give away a ship for May. It's an Avenger Titan. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on one of my Star Citizen videos uh, during that month. So please tell me what you think of the new Xi'an look. Um, do you have any questions about Star Citizen's development or for me or any ideas or any comments? Whatever. Feedback's all good. Um, a special thanks to my Patreons who helped me create the round of content I do on Star Citizen. Um, if you're interested in becoming one of them, please check out the links below, as well as everything else we've talked about will be in the links below as well. That's the sound of me putting stuff in the links below and also hitting my elbow. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the verse. <laughs>